Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, September 13th. We're tracking Hurricane Lee, which is making its move now toward the north. We'll pass about 200 miles to the west of Bermuda, bringing tropical storm conditions there, and then probably up into the Gulf of Maine somewhere where this very large wind field will, will spread hazardous conditions over a large area from New England to southeastern Canada, beginning as early as Friday afternoon. Now on this loop, you can see that we still have an eye and an eye wall. There's a dimple on the visible satellite loop. This is still a category three hurricane because the inner core is intact. So we have a very large wind field of at least 40 mile per hour winds with this embedded area that's smaller with 100 plus mile per hour winds. That inner core will begin to decay and wash out over the next few days. One of the reasons for that is there's a bit of a cold wake of cooler water north of Bermuda due to the passage of Hurricane Franklin which moved north of Bermuda a couple of weeks ago. And on the half model, you can see that there's an area of cooler water near or just less than 26 degrees Celsius to the north of the island of Bermuda, which is right here. So as the inner core passes over that, it will start to decay a bit as a thunderstorm activity in the center of the storm will be less supported. And then by the time it gets north of the Gulf Stream, we have all this cold water off of New England, which will begin to decay the hurricane's maximum winds further. So what's going to be left over is not an inner core of 100 plus mile per hour winds, but a very large wind field of 40 to 80 mile per hour winds, tropical storm and possibly minimal hurricane force as it approaches North America. Now this is the European uh, 500 millibar chart. And just to show you that, again, this is going to be west of Bermuda in about two days or a day and a half. So this will be Thursday night, point of closest approach, about 200 miles west of the island. A tropical storm warning is in effect as the gale force wind field, tropical storm force winds will intersect the island and has a healthy margin there uh, given how large it is, about 400 miles in diameter right now, and will be about 500 miles in diameter by the time this approaches New England and Canada. Now, as this comes up, again, it's all about this trough over New England. You can see the smiley face shaped contours here. This trough will be exiting. And so while it's ushering the hurricane north right now, it will leave and allow this ridge to the east on the edge of your screen to maybe build in a little bit more. So you'll see the orange colors increase as the ridging builds in over Nova Scotia. That could end up nudging the hurricane just a little bit west before it makes its final turn toward the northeast. So how, how close this gets to New England uh, will be important, and that's been a source of forecast uncertainty over the last few days. We talked to you yesterday about how the European model and the GFS model were different, and mostly different in forward speed, uh, because a faster hurricane uh, may track farther to the east because this ridge won't have as much of an opportunity to build in and force it to nudge left. So the faster the hurricane moves, the more likely a track into Nova Scotia or the eastern Gulf of Maine becomes. But the slower Lee moves, the more opportunity this ridge has to build in and maybe nudge it left. So maybe closer to Cape Cod, western Gulf of Maine. And that remains uh, kind of the dichotomy that we have today. If we go to Friday afternoon and look at the GFS and compare to the Euro, you'll see where the GFS, GFS is and then where the European model is. The Euro is still the slower of the two. They, they are closer together than they were yesterday. So we are seeing a narrowing in the swath of possibilities as confidence increases, which we expect now that we're about two and a half, three days from landfall in North America, we are starting to see confidence grow, but there is still some spread here. So the Euro remains the slower of the two. So we see a little bit of a left hook at the end, gets close to Cape Cod. This would be something like 70, 80 miles from Cape Cod. Whereas on the GFS, when it moves up, you'll see it just a little bit farther away here, about 120, 130 miles from Cape Cod. But it is farther west than yesterday. We've seen the GFS shift a little bit closer to the European. You can see that it was just a little bit closer to Nova Scotia yesterday than it is on its most recent runs. So we are seeing them come a little bit closer together. The average consensus of all available models that the National Hurricane Center is looking at is closer to Nova Scotia and the eastern Gulf of Maine than it is to Cape Cod and New England. So for now, the consensus forecast is a little bit more to the east. But if we look at the ensemble, there is still room for a shift left in the track that we'll need to watch for. This is the area of possible locations. Each red number indicates where one ensemble member out of the whole set, in this case, 51 of them for the European, shows Lee by Friday afternoon. And we still have kind of a fast group and a slow group here. And you'll see the fast group goes into Nova Scotia. The slow group ends up hooking a little bit closer to Cape Cod 
and the western Gulf of Maine. So you'll see that spread out here. The fast group goes up here. The slow group, some of them even hook directly into Nantucket and that area of Massachusetts. And so this is still kind of on the table here as a possibility if Lee moves a little slower than forecast. And on the GFS Ensemble, you see something similar a little bit farther east in both cases, but still two camps of members, one fast and east, one slow and west. Now, this is going to be a rather large wind field. So in terms of the exact center, again, the eye wall will be gone. This will not be a fully tropical cyclone as it moves over this very cold water off of New England. So the core wind field will wash out and we're just left with this very large area of hazardous wind and coastal erosion and, and high waves. Uh, but setting the edge to the west is what's really going to matter for the big metro corridor, the I-95 corridor of New England. How far west do these hazards extend is kind of the big uncertainty in the forecast. We know Nova Scotia is going to get big weather hazardous conditions. We know that Maine, more likely than not, is getting a brunt of this as well, especially since the northwestern side of the storm will have the bulk of the heavy rainfall. But how far west over Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey that the impacts extend, that's kind of what needs to be ironed out as we go farther, uh, closer to landfall here in the next couple of days. This is a look at one possible future from the HAFS model, just to give you an illustration of how big this wind field is. Everything in green here is about 40 miles per hour, tropical storm force or stronger. And I told you this is about 500 miles in diameter, and this is actually nautical miles, so that might be closer to 600 miles uh, than it is to 500 in statute units. But you can see that this whole thing will be translating northward. And as soon as Saturday afternoon, or uh, sorry, Friday afternoon, Friday evening, we could see tropical storm force winds encroaching on Cape Cod, regardless of what the track is. And even Nova Scotia could be seeing adverse conditions going downhill by Friday night. So you'll see this translate north. Now, again, like we talked about over this cold water, the maximum winds will be on their way down as the hurricane moves north, but they're still going to be impactful. They might be below hurricane force, at least the sustained winds, but higher gusts could occur. So everything here in yellow is at least 50 miles per hour strong on this particular model. Orange and reds getting you closer to 60 or 70 mile per hour winds. And you can see how a very uh, strong conditions may occur along the coastline of New England, especially Cape Cod, which really sticks out there. A lot of northerly flow will be coming down the coastline. So we'll be seeing water level rises, storm surge in Nova Scotia due to southerly and southeasterly flow on the eastern side, and then strong wind quite far west here. Now remember, Given the track uncertainty, there's where the center is on this forecast. Again, this is about 130, 140 miles east of uh, Cape Cod, but if it's a little closer, like some of those ensemble members showed and what the European model has showed, then we could see this tropical storm force wind field extending a little bit farther west, encompassing portions of Long Island, more of Connecticut, things like that. So if you're living in the, the metropolitan corridor, you do need to keep an eye on the forecast as wind impacts, power outages, water level rises along Long Island, things of that nature could become hazards here. So some of those details are not yet set in stone. What we do know is that this will be a very large area of wind and also rainfall. Uh, we can see on the GFS ensemble here that uh, primarily northwest of the track, we have a whole corridor of rain that could extend inland. Again, how far inland will depend on how far west the center tracks right now, expecting heavy rain at least through Maine and probably overlapping eastern Massachusetts and New Hampshire as well. But we could see it extend a little farther west if the track shifts west as well. This is the official NHC forecast track as of 11 a.m. Eastern time here on Wednesday, showing that Bermuda is now in a tropical storm warning. Lee will be passing about 200 miles west of the island on Thursday night and Friday morning. And uh, you can see, though, that the orange area of tropical storm force wind at least 40 miles per hour is very large. So if you mentally translate that forward along the track, you'll see that Bermuda will easily be inside of that radius. And this orange area may even grow some more before it moves up toward New England and Canada. So we're talking about a very large area of hazardous weather, elevated winds, coastal flooding, etc. That will extend outside of this track cone which is only an area of uncertainty for the center of Lee. And by the time it gets up here, this inner core wind field where the eye wall is and 100 mile per hour plus winds, that will likely have decayed substantially and will just be left with the very large, broad area of wind, 50, 60, 70 miles per hour with the potential for hurricane force gusts 
as it moves over this uh, colder water off of New England. So this will be impactful. This is not going to be on the scale of Sandy, but still a significant event that will bring wide ranging impacts. And again, exactly how far west over New England will depend on the track, which still has some room to bend left a little bit. We've seen the track nudge just a little bit west of yesterday. It was over western Nova Scotia at the time of my last video. So you've seen a little, of, little bit of a nudge west. We'll keep an eye out for further nudges as uh, the farther west this goes, the farther west impacts will extend over inland New England. So keep an eye out there and everyone be prepared, especially if you're in a vulnerable area to coastal flooding or power outages, big trees near your house, things like that. Uh, do be prepared and be smart. And we'll keep an eye on Lee as it moves north over the last couple of days remaining here before landfall. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.